Welcome to the Invincible Podcast. As you can see, I am on my own today because Robbie is away in Miami, but I'm not on my own today because we've got a, well, I don't know if I can a, a say. special guest. A special guest. Can we say special guest? You know what I mean? <laughs> Unfortunately, they asked everybody else. Most people are away on holiday, so they, they got down to the bare bones. And they got you, Julian, to come in line, which is very good of them, right? So welcome to the Invincible Podcast. That is not what you told me last night. What did I tell you last night? You said, would you like to be on the Invincible Podcast in place of Robbie? Um, we're doing rotation now. However good or bad you do, you won't be playing in the next one. Oh, right. That's what it's like, though, you know. So uh, listen, just talk about Robbie, because Robbie's not here um, because he's in Miami. And he's doing a speech over there. Like, and I've got to say this. I, I honestly hope that he got a seat on his own and some, some poor devil didn't get to sit next to him because I endured that for 11 hours and it was I tell you what half a seat on a plane for 11 hours is is uh, is not good have you got any experiences of uh, Robbie sitting next to him yeah well you may have endured it for 11 hours but I've endured it for one and a half seasons <laughs> but you know I think we can feel special because one thing he said to you was I'm really glad you're sitting next to me because I feel more comfortable yeah. being able to spread out with you <laughs> and with someone else I wouldn't do it so yeah. there's a compliment in there the fact that he kind of spreads onto your seat yeah. and my seat and we only literally have half a seat me at Arsenal when you on a plane means that we're actually in his inner circle so yeah. he must he must like us it is to a do compliment that, like. yeah oh dear but like listen um He's in Miami, so um, we're here today doing the podcast. And, and you're and off to Dubai? I'm off to Dubai t tonight. You know, um, I'll, I'll go later on today, obviously, because it's international break. And uh, let's first of all just talk about international break before we go into the Burnley and the other situations we've got. Do you really enjoy the international break? No, absolutely not, because I don't really care for international football. Hmm. And it was something we discussed on um, Saturday's Starting Eleven show, and I was shouted down as per usual. <laughs> as per usual, yeah. That I expressed a view that international football isn't that important and it's definitely not beneficial for Arsenal. And everyone else seemed to think, mm. oh no, it's beneficial. And Robert used his normal tactics of just talking, talking, talking. And I didn't get a word in. And then he moves on to the next subject. But I did kind of bring it back and then I just got shouted down again. Yeah, I, listen, I, 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 I see both sides of it. For me personally, you know, these, these next two games, um, I think in Dubai now it's about four hours in front. So if it's an eight o'clock kickoff, it'll be what, about 12 o'clock. I ain't really going to be rushing to the bar to watch two non-events really from, from England's point of view. And I'll be really honest, I don't want Saka playing, don't want um, uh, Declan Rice playing. I wouldn't mind Ramsdale playing to get some, some, some sort of game time. But... Other than that, you know, all the other guy, guys, one of the things I want to bring up quickly before we go into it, like Jesus, you know, not played for the last five Arsenal games and there he is over in Brazil. Now, I think that's wrong. I'm not happy about that. I think if you can't play for your club, there's no way you should be sent halfway around the world to play for your country. And it looks like he's going to play these games before he's even played for Arsenal. What, is, that, is that right or wrong in your eyes? Well, for me, it's all wrong because the clubs pay the players' wages and they're big, big wages. And when they get injured playing for their, their countries, what happens? It's the clubs that suffer. Now, the other side of it is I do understand Brazil's position. There's two things here. First of all, they probably feel that we lied over Martinelli, that he wasn't fit. That's so a that, great so, point, yeah. So that they didn't pick him, and then he played half a game. Did he look fit? Absolutely. He came on and he changed the game. Yeah. And they probably felt, right, we need to teach Arsenal a lesson here. So I think we were, we're suffering now for what happened. The other side of it is the rules of international football allow them to do this. Yeah. So ultimately, is it right or wrong? In football, in life, it doesn't matter as much. If you're allowed to do something within the rules, people normally take advantage of those rules. And that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, like, for me, I'm always worried about uh, going to Brazil because obviously what happened with Jesus, you know, um, he was fantastic up until about this time last season. He went to the World Cup, got injured and we didn't have him for three months. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried about that. The last time uh, Martinelli went to the um, Brazil was the game before Everton comes back and hamstring injury. You know, uh, and I think Jesus, you know, goes to Brazil, comes back, gets a hamstring injury. So I, I, I'm a little bit worried. I don't suppose it's much to m about the games because it, from from my point of view, 
you know, Jesus hasn't played for five weeks. So I look at it and think, well, maybe he can play uh, a couple of minutes before coming back and be ready for the Arsenal. But it's that travelling, all that, all that travelling. Yeah, it's not so much the travelling, it's the short-termism. Because when you look at Brazil's fixtures now, they've got two important fixtures. Yeah. And then, and I don't quite understand, I've not, not seen this before, but it looks like in South America, they have bigger qualifying leagues. Yeah. And it, it goes for a longer period of time. So their next World Cup qualifier isn't until, I believe, September 2024. So if you're the Brazil manager, do you really care if if he gets injured for, for the long term? No, not really. Short, because you don't need him really no. for a competitive game, maybe for quite a few months. So, yeah, if, you, if you're in doubt and you're Arteta, you think, no, nah, I don't want to risk it because we've got another game. We've got another few games. Yeah. We can't risk him being out for a few months. If you're the Brazil manager, what are you thinking? Well, it's, you know, if we if he plays, he gets injured. We don't need him anyway. So yeah, self interest comes comes into play. A good point. And of course, they've got a few injuries. Richarlison's not about um, Neymar, so Jesus is going to be important to him going forward in these next couple of games. So I believe he's going to play in these couple of games yeah. as well. And, and what's the game they've got next week? The biggest game, Argentina. Argentina a lot, yeah. And that for them is like an Arsenal Spurs game. Yeah. So. There you go. Um, so uh, we've got obviously Martinelli's out there and Gabriel's out there. All our Brazilian boys are out there. So it's going to be, uh, I think they go on about two o'clock in the morning. So I might have to have a little look at the old sex to see if, uh, I might actually watch those yeah. games out there. Like They might yeah. be the games that I uh, I get to watch. You're definitely looking at the text, making sure that they're all okay and all that. Because like, yeah, okay. it, it never surprised me that you're not going to go down to the bar to watch an England game because the only England game you and I have been to together neither of us actually went out no do you remember that <laughs> yeah it was a game, uh, Ivory Coast was it, I, I couldn't even remember it was a game yeah I, it was Ivory Coast it was uh, we, we we had a hospitality dinner in a yeah. box and uh, yeah. I, I, never I, seen I remember one what we had for dessert but I don't remember who we played I, against I, I actually remember Ben White was playing he played right back that day like, and I think we we, we looked out the window didn't we yeah. <laughs> we didn't yeah, actually, just have a picture taken yeah we never actually all to get watched reception the game, on the we? phone we, yeah I know we didn't actually watch the game so uh, there you go like you know so I actually um, looking to go to the England Brazil game in March okay you know so um, you know yeah uh, I, I used to always go and watch Brazil yeah well of course like you yeah know, really, so uh yeah so like with that not so much game. anymore no not so much no more like you know so uh, listen Let's talk about Burnley game. It wasn't um, the greatest game in the world, but three points, like, you know, and I, I know that I celebrated Spurs' uh, well, Wolves' winner yeah. a lot, a lot well, harder. It was more you celebrated Spurs' defeat than Wolves' yeah, winner, the, the, although we do have a certain affection for Wolves. Yes, we do. But yeah. I did, you know, it was more about Spurs losing. I, I actually was on a high going into that into that game um, and I think like, I weren't the only one that, that yeah. celebrated that so much but the game itself I don't think was great but we got the three points and that was the main thing yeah I mean if you put it into perspective they had I think um, I read the Arsenal website before the before the game and they had like, the five greatest Arsenal Burnley games and this is obviously in Premier League because football didn't exist before no, Premier League. Because so, yeah. there was a really great game in, I think it was May the 1st, 1953, when Arsenal won 3-2 against Burnley. And um, we were 3-1 up and we had to win the game to win the league. And all the other games had finished. And my dad said it was the best or most exciting game he'd ever been to. Because for the last 15 minutes, Burnley scored on, on 75. Arsenal just kicked the ball out. He said the atmosphere was like Arsenal had scored a goal for yeah, 15 yeah, yeah. minutes solidly. So to take that particular game out in 1953, I don't remember too many great games against no. Burnley because of the style of football they play. Yeah. However, actually in, in relation to how bad Arsenal-Burnley games usually are, that one was pretty good. It was interesting. They play in, in a different way. I know it was said that he, he mixed it up a bit and he did come and defend and he didn't go completely gung-ho. But I thought technically they were quite good and they were better than I anticipated. Yeah, I, I, and fair play to um, to, the, to them and um, the way that they played. And um, they did come and give it a go. And in the first 20 minutes, you know what I mean? Like... Um, Vincent Company's team, of course, and the way that they played, they had a couple of good chances. And then once we got the goal off, I never felt we was in danger. But they come back, give it a go. Um, do you think they'll stick with him? I hope so. 
Hope mm. so. Because if you look at the first half, we did have, when I mean, you look at the stats, we had most of the possession, which is normal. We had far more corners, but we also had far more shots. But what was really interesting is in that first half, they had more shots on target. Yeah. So, so they look more, more dangerous. And the way they played, if they carry on playing like that, then I think they'll be okay. Yeah, I'd like to see, um, I don't know if you've seen the documentary with, with Burnley, which is pretty good, and Vincent Company comes along as a, comes a, about as a really, really good guy, and, and um, you know, obviously he was a fantastic footballer, like, you know, unfortunately he played for Manchester City. But um, listen, after that game, we, we've, we found ourselves um, in a good position in the league, and uh, found ourselves, I think, like with a chance of, um, getting in the top spot depending on what happened with Man City I don't think it was ever going to get top spot because of goal average and that but Man City dropped points um, at the weekend um, was you surprised they dropped points? No because not because I think Man City are not a great team because I think going to Stamford Bridge is a difficult game I mean Liverpool have drawn there mm. Arsenal could easily have got beaten there um, yes, they'd lost to Brentford the uh, the week before, which again was not quite as funny as watching Spurs lose to Wolves, but was quite you know yeah. was was pretty good. But Chelsea are a team with immense squad depth, a really good manager, yeah. and not a bad team. And against the bigger teams, they've been up in their their game and they've been playing to their potential, and that's what they did. They played really well, and City struggled, and it was a great game. Yeah, I thought it was a great game. And actually, when it went 4-3, I did think that uh, Manchester City were, are, are going to do it. And I, actually, when they scored that goal, mate, 4-3, I said, hey, how can anybody stop this team? They're, they're, they're that good. But like, there was a bit of vulnerability to, towards them. And 4-4, yeah. you know, so... Um, I mean, the fact that they've conceded four goals must show that they have vulnerabilities. Yeah, exactly that, like, you know, and, and well exploited by uh, Chelsea. So at the end of it, can we say it? Not a bad weekend. No, not a very good weekend. Very good weekend. Even like, if it had huh? just been a Spurs loss, it was a very good weekend. It was a very good weekend, like, you know, so uh, we enjoyed it. Arsenal got to, um, obviously ended up um, dropping down to third place because Liverpool got a better goal average yeah, but it's, it's, against it's, Brentford. It's only one. We've got Brentford next game, so uh, that's yeah. going to be an interesting game. Um, looking forward to it. Going back, let's have a little bit going back into the week that, that's just been and uh, the VAR. Um, First of all, I'm going to ask you the question: Like, you, do you like this program? I, I know Michael were having sort of like a lot of people have slagged it off, and he jumps to the defence of it. Like, I'm going to say it now: it's crap. Like, you know what I mean, that's my my honest opinion of it. Like, you know, it's just a, a load of nonsense. Um, what's your thoughts of it? Okay, if you say it's crap, you, you're talking about is it entertaining? So, so is it something of interest to you? Well, it is a little bit, and I, when I watch it, it's just, it's just. I've got to say, I got frustrated with the way they spoke about the, the, the Newcastle game, the the way they come through and, and got the sending off for for uh, Romero was right, but oh my word, it took so so long. I just don't, I I, I just don't like the the concept of it. You know, what I mean, it can be um, doctors a little bit. I, I think you could like put things in there afterwards and things like that, and for them to watch that and then to turn around and say it wasn't a foul against Gabriel and and looking at the angles that they looked at well it's ridiculous I, I actually w looking at it I will say this I, I agree with the offside uh, the ball going out you can't yep. you can't define whether it is or whether it isn't then you the offside well I'm, I'm sorry if you cannot um, get the offside from that why you why why is it in the technology in because if you there's there's got to be it's got to be foolproof and when I see players being given offside for for a millimeter and things like that and then they can't get get the lines in there that that's a big worry for me like you know uh, but I, I don't care what anybody says a decent referee or whatever sees that there's a push on on Gabriel especially the one from behind. You know, I, I just think it was a ridiculous thing. It just, but it just so sh sums it up, really. And uh, I just feel that it's a bit wishy-washy, if I'll be honest. Okay. I like the concept. The concept of us being able to hear the audio of what's gone on is a great concept. What I don't like about that programme is the delivery. Now, one reason why fan channels have become so popular 
is because they're not as stale. They're, they're less regimented that we can ask whatever we want. That was obviously massively scripted. And there was... Yeah, good point. And he wasn't... Whether Michael Owen just doesn't have the depth of character to ask the difficult questions or whether he's been primed not to, the fact is that particular show is almost like an advert that there's no you're not getting investigative journalism they're asking difficult questions so he didn't question what was being said so he just let just let him carry on and he dodged the big question because the big question was on the um with the Jorginho um smack in the head oh yeah there was that as well it, it, it was massive absolutely massive now if you look at the rules of the game the rules of the game are if you hit someone in the head n not not going for the ball with either, with your arm or your hand in the face or the head then that's violent conduct yeah unless it was negligible contact you cannot say that was negligible contact he smacked him straight yeah. in the head. So he chose not to, they chose not to do anything about that, didn't they? No, he, I, I know that there's mistakes, and that especially in in a game when we're at games, we see it once. It's very difficult to call to call it. I, I've said a lot of, I wouldn't say stupid things. Other people have called it stupid things in fan cams, but that's because I've seen it once from a position yeah. behind the goal, could be in netting, could be behind a post, and that was my view of it. Now the difference with the refereeing now is they don't get one take yeah, they've at got it. How many? As many they, as they want. They've got all the cameras. Yeah. So when I saw it, and we were a long way from it, weren't we? Well, I didn't even know. Didn't yeah. even see it really. It, it, we were a long way, and we saw him go down, and that's all we really saw from yeah, our, our viewpoint. 100%. But the viewpoint they had was from multiple, multiple cameras, and they can replay it. How can they misinterpret such an? obvious rule he was hit in the head yeah that's a great and, point and it was and it wasn't negligible therefore it's violent conduct he's got to go now the way that my client glossed over that was oh yeah there was two other incidents both of which in hindsight um could have should have been a, a red card now Havertz one could have been it could have been the f not in my eyes so I think I think if he hits him with his right foot it's a sending no, off no what I'm saying it could have been that if he'd got sent off from from that, from it, you that, that challenge it. was it a clear and obvious mistake. mistake no maybe not yeah but I would say it wasn't a sending off it was close but the one on Jorginho it was so blatant yeah and, and they glossed over that so that particular show I just think is the concept's good but it's just an advert. It's yeah. just an advert that they're not questioning them hard. No, no you know, I, I, I have to sort of sit here and just say like, you know, I'm not sure if that, that audio can be changed. You know what I mean? It's not going out live, like in a rugby game, yep. it goes out live, you know exactly what they're saying and all that. They could turn around and go, I'll tell you what, we do this and we do that. I, I look back at the Liverpool game, you know, uh, versus Spurs and you know that uh, uh, they could have changed the audio for that as far as I'm concerned because that was an absolute uh, calamity of what they've they're saying so I'm not all I'm not really uh, in favour of watching that like um, again because at the end of it what can they say you know what I mean uh, every referee has turned around and said that any, I'll say that again every credible referee has turned around and said that that was a, a, a it's foul. blatant it's blatant I'm foul. not a referee but I can read English you know, and the rules are very blunt. And, and all these things of, of um, Gabriel not being strong enough, right? Well, y you know, put yourself in that position. Like, you're just about to head the ball and someone pushes you. You know what I mean? You're going you're gonna to go over. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Like, you know, if you're ready for it, you know what I mean? Like, it's a different sort of thing. If you're standing on and someone, if you come and push me now and I know you're going to do it, you, you, you're tensing up and all that. But if you come from, be from behind... At any stage, and just go like that. You can knock people over, like you know. What I mean, it's just as simple as that. So uh, laws of physics. I just, I just think it was a ridiculous decision. But um, you know, nothing's really come of it with what Mikel said neither. So if if they was that adamant about it, I also think maybe well, hold on. Why haven't you sort of pulled him over the coals of it? But I, I will say now, look. Once Arteta has said that, 
I've seen other managers now starting to be a little bit more braver coming out for you. I remember, I think it was Gary O'Neill said, oh, I can't say nothing because I'm going to get fined. All of a sudden, yeah. now they're coming out and saying, which I think is a good thing, Julian, that, that managers should be allowed to. Well, it is up to a point. Yeah, because, there's a line. Could, there's a yeah, line. Because if you question every single decision, and a lot of them, a lot of them will if they're given the, the green light to do so, then you undermine the authority of the referees. And I think whatever I think about those particular decisions, I'm not in the camp that they've been bought off and that they're corrupt. I think they are, I'd like to think, they're just mistakes, they're human errors. Oh, okay. But then when, when they do make these mistakes and they're not really punished for it, are they? Like, you know, I think like, for, for, for instance, if, you, if your job is to draw lines and you forget to do them, I don't think you should be allowed back. No, you should be sacked. Your, you should be sacked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. not, not, but, but, not playing a championship game and then and then being brought back for another game like you know uh, they get one game bans and things like that i think there's got to be a little bit more uh punishment now because it's 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 a m massive massive business yeah uh, and you know like if you was working in a bank and you, you know you you forgot to put the funds in for one day what are they going to do to you like you know uh, so I, I do think there's got to be a little bit more of that yeah and also being a referee how hard can it be you know you you read the rules, you don't have to be as fit. Yeah, you've got to be fit, but most of us are fit enough to be a referee. There must be loads of loads of people that can take their places. So if you're not up yeah. to scratch, you make mistakes like a player. You get dropped and yeah. someone else comes in your place. There's not just 20, I'm sure there's not like 10, 20 referees in the country that are good enough to do the job. I don't think the job would be that difficult. I could do it. Yeah, I like, you know, I'd well, love, I could, I'd love I could to refer an Arsenal game. I, I could have called a few of those ones there. I, I have to say, I think looking back at the Tottenham one, they went through all of that there, and I think they got that right with with the decisions there. You know, if I'll be honest, um, but but then I, I didn't see the Man United one by that time. I, I, my my uh, my head had gone. You know what I mean? Enough's enough, like you know. So uh, yeah, but I, th I think one thing we should end the conversation with the vast majority of decisions they do get right give them some credit but the ones that we talk about are the ones they get yeah, wrong yeah and, and, and the, the thing is Julian I will say that is that when when before VAR come in the referees did get most of them right yeah and they obviously got a few wrong um, so that is the thing when you bring in this VAR they shouldn't get any wrong that's my, my, my thing with all those cameras yeah with all of what you see they should not get one decision wrong yeah, you know, like I'll go back to the the penalty at, at Wolves. I'll just quickly go on to that one, like you know, clear and obviously doesn't touch him, but like you know, three four weeks before that, the Havertz one at Manchester United, they overturn. Why are they not overturning that one, like you know? So again, it's not factual, is it? It's someone's opinion, and that's why I think VAR breaks down. Yeah, but then that's what VAR is producing. VAR is not making the decisions. VAR is giving them more evidence to make their decision but it's still humans making the decision yeah, I think and, it, and I do think it's important that humans do make the decisions I I was um, watching the uh, the podcast with uh, Aaron's dad and one of the other subjects they talked about was VAR towards the end and he's talking about well you know you can bring in AI um, artificial intelligence on this you don't really need a referee I just think that would be going too far. Yeah, I, the, the, I, I you, think you, you need you a referee. The, you want the human element of it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a game at the end of it. You don't need complete perfection. Personally, I, I, listen, I've been brought up in, a, in a, uh, an era where referees were, were were important. You know, listen, if you know, when you, if you, if the referee didn't turn up, you didn't have a game. You know, so I do still think they're very, very important. And I also think the you know the assistant referee is but, but his job now is getting less and less and less where you know offsides it, are very it, it very difficult he doesn't have the balls to make a decision anymore no no I don't you know what I mean like and linesmen used to you know back in the day used to be uh, um, could make decisions you know what I mean like if you if you was messing about with a centre centre half or whatever and they see something going on the old flag would go up as soon as it did you knew you was in trouble like you know so I do think that, that they've got to have a little look at things on that like you know it's not working at this moment in time uh, the way it should be and I, 
No, I'm, it's, I'm it's, it's, it is working, it's just not working perfectly, perfectly, and we expect perfection. And maybe we should lower our expectations. Well, not really, because in tennis you get um, you get the right decision. In cricket, nine times out of ten, you get the right decision. Certainly in rugby, you do. Um, you know, um, but listen, VAR's here to stay, Julian. It ain't going to go away. No, and that, that's the end of it. Like you know. Made a very, very good point. Uh, Did I? Uh, well, which no, one? No, you uh, made only very, the, only you the one. To be honest, you've not made very... Come back soon, Robbie. Yeah. But uh, what I will say is that um, you talked about the Aaron Ramsdale's dad's interview. I think we... I don't really want to talk about it, but we're going to have to. Um, and uh, I don't know if the people have seen the, the, um, the interview, but basically what he's turned around and said is that... Um, Obviously, Aaron and the family are very upset about the way it's been dealt with. They, they haven't spoke. Uh, Mikel Arteta hasn't spoke to him to say why he's been dropped or or, or whatever. Um, I will say that, that he said some very very good things in it uh, as well, um, saying that you know the team, uh, the, the fans should get behind Raya. There was also when Raya was making a couple of mistakes, fans were singing their names. He felt that that wasn't the right thing to do. Um, and pleaded with um, the Arsenal fans to, to get behind Raya and all that, which I thought was very admirable yeah. um, in, in what he was saying. Um, it's not often that you get a, 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 a family member come in and say, say something about football nowadays, you know, and being dropped. Um, I think it's a, a new thing, I think, because of social media and everything like that. I will say the one thing about, about it, it's a completely different scenario than any other position. You know what I mean? Like if you, if, if a midfielder gets dropped, there's always a chance he can get back in the team. There's always a chance, even if you're left out or dropped. And you know, I'm, I'm sure you got dropped more times than me in football. In the no, teams. I didn't. I uh, managed the team. Oh no, well, yeah. I got out and managed the team. You know, but what I'm saying is that when you're dropped, you dropped, you. One, you, you know that you, there's a chance you're going to get back in the team, and also there's a chance you're going to get some minutes at some stage of the game. For a goalkeeper, you're not. Um, once you, it's very, very unlikely you're gonna come on. Like You're not gonna come on for a tactical reason. The only reason you're gonna come on is for a sending off or an injury. So it's a different situation to any other position on, on the field. Like Now, I know you've seen the interview and watched it. Like yeah. what, what was your makings of it? Well, the first thing is that I did hear some commentary on the interview. Um, the, the day before and then when you very kindly invited me on in last place to come on this uh, <laughs> particular show then um, I felt obliged to to actually watch the whole interview rather than rely on other people's comments on it uh, the first thing I didn't realise uh, my girlfriend was a bit upset she thought international break means a uh, break from football um, <laughs> we watched it together last night for an hour and 40 minutes when she wanted to watch uh, Married at First Sight, but I have to say it was more entertaining than Marriage at First yeah, Sight. Yeah, so two right ears yeah. as well, like, you know. Um, so the, the first thing I would say was that Nick comes across really well and that he does not, he does not slate Arteta. No. He does not slate Arsenal and he makes the point that he's talking not for Aaron, but as A Aaron's father. father. Yeah. And as a father, I thought it was wonderfully balanced, really wonderfully balanced. And having met the man a couple of times, um, he is different. He, he, I mean, I don't know too many parents of professional footballers, but he, he's a gentleman. Yeah. He, he's a gentleman. And he put a balanced opinion in, and he said some very complimentary things about Arsenal and about the fan base. And he spoke both as a father and, strangely, he, as a gooner, as he calls yes, himself. Yeah. Even though he's a West Brom fan, yeah, it, it, I, he, he's got this mentality that while Aaron plays for Arsenal, he's an Arsenal fan. Yeah. And the reason we've seen so much of him is because he sits behind the goal with us at away games. Yeah, he's there every week. And, every and I'm game. sure he's got the option to be sat in a better seat. And he doesn't. He chooses to be behind the goal with the fans and he's like any other fan other than the fact that we all know him because he's Aaron's dad and he made various points that it's not about he wasn't talking about the football element 
because we've had plenty of discussions, you and I, yeah. about whether Aaron Ramsdale should play or Raya should play. What he was talking, it was very thought provoking, was the human element of it. Yeah. The fact that it doesn't matter whether Aaron should play or David Raya should play, it's should he be been told that he was being dropped because he hasn't been told anything according to yeah according, according to, to his dad yeah and it, is that right or is that wrong because from a human perspective that seems to be wrong not the way especially modern managers and i'm not just talking about football modern management should be that it should be direct communication however what is arteta's motivation here because one thing we know about him is that he is determined to win and what motivation has he got for not communicating that because he must think there's a benefit of not communicating that yeah one, one thing is a very interesting thing that what, what we were saying about that and um i i totally agree i, I think that you know you get this um narrative oh it's elite sport you you know you're getting paid well and that so they should just take it and be a man about it and, and all he that. is taking it and he has taken it which is fair enough but there's a history of um bad communication between the goalkeepers because all the goalkeepers have left under a cloud now if you look back martinez left under a cloud slagged off arsenal um and the way it was dealt with um which he now gets the wrath of every time uh, Arsenal play Aston Villa, which I think is wrong. I love so I like, love that he was a very very good goalkeeper, and I, I and uh, he actually said it was a decision, it wasn't a footballing decision. Then Leno's come out and said um, was never told, never told what was going on and and, and things like that. So there's been uh, an, uh, another instance where a goalkeeper that was done okay for Arsenal has sort of been not treated properly on, on, on the way it's gone there and now Aaron's being treated the same um, so it does seem like a familiar sort of thing with the Arsenal goalkeepers I don't, I don't know why that is um, it, because it may be because it's a different position and whatever personally if it's me um, it doesn't matter if you're told or not you know what I mean it, it's yeah. still the same it's the same thing but I think when Mikel comes out and says, you know, I've got two goalkeepers, they're going to be in competition and things like that. And then when you're left out and then you're not really being given a fair shout at it, where like, we know it's not being rotated because there's been errors from Raya and he's not been uh, left out and whatever. I think that's when there's a little bit of a problem, like, you know, like, you, you, and I think that maybe that's where the, the Ramsdale, well, certainly the dad is a little bit upset, is that, you know, if you, if you don't want my son, that's fair enough. Um, when we move on, I will say this about it: you know, a, a lot of um, negatives and positives come out. I don't like at the end of it. Aaron has made mistakes in in the past, as we all know. Um, but and, and and people are trying to highlight that a lot more. But f from my point of view, I, I, I say it again: I don't think he deserved to be dropped. That is my opinion. Um, I look back at some of the wonderful performances it is, that he's made away from home and, and he's saved us a lot of times. Also, yeah, he has made mistakes as well. Raya has come in and he has made mistakes. The different, a lot of people going, oh, one thing that I will pick up on, which was said, was from a lot of fans are saying, well, like, the Ramsdale weren't worried about Leno when, he come, when, when that happened. And it is a ruthless game and whatever, like, you know, I don't know what Aaron was promised when he when he signed for Arsenal. I don't know what Raya was promised when he signed for Arsenal. The one thing that I will say is when Leno was left out for Aaron, Ramsdale come in and produced and it wasn't like, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. He won, won all the Arsenal fans over with some fantastic performance. I don't think Raya has got to that height yet. He hasn't done that. There's been mistakes and it's not been great. I felt he had a very, very good game against Burnley. And I will say there's a little bit of the, the concentration era, um, element, sorry, where um, particularly now, if you have a look at it with the games now, you're not involved as much. The goalkeeper's not involved. So you have to be a little bit more switched on and all that. So, you know, you could have to maybe compliment Raya for, for for that side of it like you know at the end of the day I don't think it's the question I don't think any Arsenal fans questioning it about whether you leave him out or whatever it's now the question is is it been done rightly and, and I look back at the history of the goalkeepers from Martinez you know that, that's been at Arsenal for I think 19 years maybe even longer to, to criticise the club 
for Leno to come out and say what he's saying, like you know, Leno actually come out and said it's not for for for, for footballing reasons. Well, like it that. was he got dropped. Yeah. Well, he, he, so for him to say that, I mean, I'll, I'll concentrate on the, the Leno, the, the Leno one, because you, you mentioned that you know there wasn't the, the same upheaval of yeah, look, uh, the, you know people weren't as critical because Aaron came in and straight away made the position his own but if we take ourselves back to the situation when that happened we'd had three premier league games we'd lost a, we'd lost to brentford on that first yeah. that first game chelsea we'd and then, we then lost to chelsea then we've got absolutely smacked by Man City, I think it was five 0 Which I don't wouldn't have put that at Leno's door, though. If oh. I'd be really honest, well, you might not put it at Leno's door, but the situation is people were clamouring for change. Yeah, you know, people were unhappy. I remember doing fan cams then, and I was coming out and I was saying, "Look, it's early. We've been a bit unfortunate. We've got injuries," and I was getting, as usual, absolutely, sla- yeah. absolutely slaughtered. It wasn't for a very good time. It wasn't time. a good time. So people are wanting change. Therefore, when you change anything, it's a good thing because we're losing, so make a change. It's like when you're losing a game and bring on a sub, bring on a sub, you know, change it up, change it up because they want change. So when Aaron came into the team, it was the best possible time to come into the team. It's like when a new manager comes in. A new manager normally comes in nine times out of ten when the previous manager is doing badly. So people want to change. They're normally embraced. And that's what Aaron was done. Aaron's timing of coming into that team was perfect for Aaron because we were at our lowest end. Yeah. We were actually bottom of the league. Well, we was, yeah. Three defeats on the spin. Like yeah, big, big defeats as well. So, uh, so I would put that down more to the circumstance than the actual up in, in the performance. Raya has come into the team when we're as high, you know, as a fan base as we've been since, for me, the Invincibles. Even, you know, taking out the FA Cup wins, which were kind of like an oasis in a, in a pool of misery, is that now we're at this high. So to make the change now, people are questioning it. You know, why change what's not fixed, what's not broke? Yeah, I get that. I, and I, I do get that, like, you know. So for, for, for you, uh, you think it's the right decision or not to, to um, leave out? Rams down, it, it is it is marginal, it is marginal. But I go back to the John Lukage David Seaman decision. I love John Lukage. Yeah. John Lukage for me gave me my greatest moment in um in my life. You know, if it wasn't for him, then I I wouldn't be the person I am today. And every other player that, it's that was a very on that similar pitch. situation when you yeah. when you look back at it because um, obviously. John Lucas won the league in eighty nine. In yeah. ninety, we we was uh, we runners all, up. We, we were all right. We was all right. Yeah, we weren't, we weren't, we weren't again at that sort of stage looking at maybe replacing the goalkeeper. But David Seaman come in, and and he was a step up. At, 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 well, and he proved it. Yeah, he did prove it. And and, and that that is the problem with Ray at the moment. I don't think he. he that, listen, we've got to give him time and everything like yeah. that to, to actually prove it. Like, but going of course now, um, he's actually not really an Arsenal player at this moment in time is he and because of yeah, that I, reason, I think that's a technicality it is a it technicality was, it was done for, for FFP yeah it is a technicality but because of that technicality come to the game next Saturday week we play Brentford away um, Raya can't play in that game no he can't now um, uh, Ramsdale does just another thing on the Ramsdale situation I don't think Gareth Southgate's helped this situation either because he's turned around to Ramsdale and said, right, if you're not playing, I can't guarantee you a, a place in the squad. Now, I get that to a certain degree because if you think about it, uh, Pope at Newcastle got left out of the squad because he wasn't playing well for Newcastle. Like, you know, He's not in the squad at the moment, but he's back doing well at Newcastle. Um, and he's saying that, you, you know, you not playing you can't guarantee a game now he's come out and it, and it is said like you know Phillips is still in that squad without playing minutes for, for Manchester City Maguire is back in the squad at, at Manchester United but in the past hasn't played for months and months and months and never ever said it to them or never come out publicly I think that again puts pressure on Arsenal pressure on the Ramsdales and pressure on Arteta because if he doesn't get his place back in this England uh, uh, sorry in the Arsenal team 
come January, he's got a decision to make with the Euros um, r- around the corner. I think if the Euros weren't around the corner, Julian, after, I don't think it'd be so much of an issue. I think that, but I think it's going to come down to January now. And I don't think Gareth Southgate helped the situation at all. He, he hasn't for Arsenal, but as we said before with international football, it's vested interest. Gareth Southgate does not care about Arsenal. No, that's true. Arteta doesn't really care about England. Arteta cares about Arsenal. Southgate cares about England. Aaron Ramsdale cares about Aaron Ramsdale. That's their primary. I'm not saying they don't care about other things in life, but that's their primary motivation. Now, what Southgate's done is agitated it for his benefit. That's why we don't like those comments, because you and I... I'm not saying we completely don't care about England, but we care far more about Arsenal. Yeah. And ultimately, he didn't say that he won't be in the squad. He said that he can't guarantee it. But he can't guarantee it if he is playing. No, that is a fair point. Like so, uh, yeah, he's agitated it, but I don't think Arteta will feel any pressure. I don't think Arteta will feel that, oh, I better, I better start playing him so he gets in the England squad. He won't care. I think one thing As that much. comes, the one thing that comes through in the interview more for me than anything else is that there, um, you can see that Nick, who's obviously Aaron's dad, is absolutely gutted. Not that his son's not just playing. It's because they absolutely love Arsenal. You know what I mean? Like they've really took to the, to the club. They know it's a massive club. I, I've spoken to, the, to him like you know what I mean. How big Arsenal is to compared to the clubs that he's played at. It's it's a massive disappointment for for of for Alan and, and the family, and we get that, like you know what I mean. But ultimately, I'm going to have to ask you the question: Where do you see it ending? With Aaron Ramsdale leaving in January or in the summer? Up to Arteta. What do you think will happen after this game? Say, for instance, we play Brentford, uh, we win two uh, nil. Aaron Ramsdale is a blinder. We play Seville on the Wednesday. What, what do you think will happen? I'd like to think in the same way as Robbie's coming back next week and I'll still be here <laughs> <laughs> that um, that Ramsdale has an absolute blinder and then is retained and he plays he plays at unbelievably brilliant and Arteta can't can't drop him but the reality is Robbie will be sat here next, next week. week. <laughs> not, will you be? Oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Well, I don't think so. Like, maybe, oh. maybe you can get another appearance like well, that. Maybe. No, like, you know, you have to, you know, slip an envelope under the under the city or something like you know. But um, yeah, that's that's my my my, um, my thoughts on it as well. Like that, I think that um, that Ramsdale obviously will play against Brentford. Yeah, I don't think really matter if he plays like fantastically well. Or but it should matter, shouldn't it? It should matter, but I, that, that and that, I think that's where the little bit of a problem lies with me about it. Like you know, if uh, you know, a few weeks ago against West Ham, he didn't um, go as well as it planned for him. But it, I, I think that it didn't didn't matter if if he'd have had a blinder. I don't think it would have mattered. Like you know, so uh, yeah, he had a blinder in the League Cup before. Yeah, against yeah. Brentford. Oh, he did have a game against yeah. Brentford and was still left out, like you know. So, but it's, is it different in a Premier League game? I don't know, like you know. Um, no, and and he, I think that if if he was thinking about bringing him back, I wouldn't have been maybe giving him a game before this Brentford game, like you know. What I mean, so I don't know. You know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Um, big big game, of course, that will be. We'll talk about that probably next week, or maybe you I, might be yeah. able to as well, like you know. So. Uh, we go from there. Like, what are you up to? Um, is we now got international break? You, 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 I know you went on a cruise last time. You, I, you, I, I did go on a cruise. Um, my friend who I went on a cruise with has now got himself a girlfriend, and I've been dropped. Oh, um, they're just dropping last. Yeah. Seems to be a habit around here. Yeah, it, like, um, yeah. you're going away with your girlfriend, and unfortunately, she sees three as a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't get that. Um, my girlfriend has no holiday time left oh. so she's talking about going away for the weekend um, she has mentioned Liverpool slightly hesitant on that one well I don't I don't blame you I think you should give Liverpool a swerve like yeah, yeah. Um, maybe head down Bournemouth way somewhere like yeah that. Bournemouth Bournemouth's nice. great so at the moment um, probably watching Married at First Sight for the oh, weekend. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, that ain't yeah. going to be too good, like you know. Well, listen, we've come to the end of the end of the show. Just before we go, like you know, I've got to say this. 
um, thanks for coming on the Invincibles and making the effort with the Invincible shirt. You know, yes, I don't know if anybody's um, noticed it's, that. It's one of the few shirts that's actually too big for me. That my mum used to buy me shirts um, bigger that I'd grow into, but, and uh, I did grow into them. And this one, um, it's probably I can thank um, sort of Russian girlfriend number two the fact that I've lost weight. I wouldn't recommend her as a girlfriend, but as a personal trainer she and, was good and like dietitian, her. brilliant. Looking at that shirt, yep. right? What player does it remind you of straight away? Martin Keown. Martin Keown, right. Well, I've gone Patrick Vieira like, you know. Okay. It's, uh, and, um, and what comes into your mind with, with this shirt? Is there a particular vision you have with the, this the, shirt? The, the vision with that shirt is obviously the Man United game. Yep, it, it, correct. You know, it, it, and, and that's the one I've got in my I, head. I, obviously, Mike, what yeah. happened that day, what, fantastic. Even though we, yeah. we didn't win the game, we drew it nil-nil. It was it was a very very special game and that kit, I think, will always be remembered for that game. Yeah. Uh, and you said Martin Martin Keown Vieira. Yeah. Um, and, and and for me, just in case anyone's in any doubt, it's him jumping and smacking smashing, smacking a Van Nistelrooy Van, on the head, Van Nistelrooy, which yeah. of course isn't violent conduct because that's acceptable that is that was and he did, well, absolutely deserved it. It, it wasn't acceptable because he got fined a lot of money and banned it, for two games oh, I think it was money well spent but, uh, on that fine. yeah and um so, so that we, 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 you know like the invincible season with that kit there very iconic yeah um, and, it, and it also just one last thing i can say about that particular game also led to one of my fame well one of my my greatest arson wenger quotes which was life is about inches yeah, and that's uh, and, and it was because yeah, that, that you know penalty, that penalty yeah. could have been so so different. And yeah. I look back on that; it's never a penalty in the first place. No, like, of course, you know we dived I mean? as usual. Dived as usual, and uh, anyway, we uh, we come out of there. We've scraped a nil nil draw. Scraped a nil nil, and uh, probably the best nil nil ever. Um, in our in our, I, I can't I, think. I, of th any. I think that one and. The FA, and the FA Cup in 2005, oh, yeah, 2005 where we were absolutely hammered, useless, hammered the whole game and if 120 gonna, minutes yeah. and we came out and Vieira's last kick, kick. as an Arsenal, oh, player, Arsenal player not only gave us the FA Cup but stopped them winning it and we'll leave it with a goalkeeper Jens Lehmann on that day was absolutely outstanding so um, yep. there you go like, you know. Julian thanks for uh, stepping in at the last minute and uh, making sure the Invincible podcast could go ahead I'm, so well done I look forward to next week and, and the uh, week maybe, after maybe next week you might get an inclusion next week like, you know. so listen guys thanks for listening thanks for watching don't forget um, do all the stuff you know subscribe whatever AFTV The Invincible podcast Myself, Robbie, and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion, brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.